Hello friends from Mobile Geeks, welcome. We are in Frankfurt at the Auto Show and we are especially at the floor from ZF and with me is an expert and I'm really excited about it, about electromobility. Jörg Rundos, he is the head of e-mobility at ZF. Hello, good morning. Yeah, welcome on our booth. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, you are the head of, of e-mobility for whole ZF, yet a lot of people think, okay, what has it have to do with e-mobility? They are doing some other stuff. But right, yeah. There are some people on this planet who yeah. do not know that we are already engaged in that business since yeah. 2008. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we, in fact, started our business in 2008 with the first Mercedes S400 hybrid or the BMW an Active 7 hybrid, yeah, as well as the Q5 or the Jetta in US. So. We are long time in that business, more than 10 years already, but we didn't offer full systems right now. And that's a trend and the change we are going through right now. Yeah, there is a change in, in the way tier one suppliers are working together with OEMs. It's not only the part, you're, you're manufacturing complete systems now. Right, yeah. And we started this journey because we saw it with the complexity we not only have in automated driving right now, we as well have on powertrain. Yeah. yeah, you may have heard that there is a lot of technical solutions right now to, at the end, reduce fuel consumption. Yeah, and we are starting with electrification, smart electrification can be 48 volt systems, uh, mild hybrids, we have full hybrids already. Nowadays we have plug-in hybrids coming more and more and then full electric drivetrain. And the history repeats them itself, yeah, same as for mobile phones or for other systems in the car. The key is in integration. Yeah. So, and, and that's, that's, that's the main part, how to integrate these, these kind of, it's easier to integrate a whole system that you're manufacturing in, a, in an existing car uh, than manufacturing just part, isn't it? Yeah. The, the idea is for our customers, when, when we integrate systems, yeah, we reduce the number of components that we ship to our customers. Yeah. When you see vehicle manufacturers, they may have to integrate a lot of parts and they have to connect them all with wires. There's a lot of cables and wiring systems. In a, it looks like a huge spider system. Yeah. And when we integrate a system, we take out the spider system, we make it much easier for the customer to install in his factory our systems and of course with integration overall the system becomes cheaper so it's a benefit for us all for us as a supplier we can do business our customer has some cost reduction and uh, simplification of logistics in the manufacturing and of course the end customer has same functionality for less money we have in the background a car maybe we have a, a walk uh, to the car yes and, we could and, do of course uh, to to show me what's what's going what's going on there well, in, oh. this, in this model, we don't have electrification in. We but you have a plug-in hybrid there. Yes, yeah, that's a plug-in hybrid, but it's not open. Yeah? We have a system right over yeah, there no. where the transmission is open. Yeah? But this shows the first integration. You see a transmission system in here, and it looks like a standard 8 HP transmission system. Yeah. But what we did is keeping the same shape, keeping the same envelope yeah, as as we offer a system right now, we, with the next generation, will fully integrate the electric drivetrain. We offer 150 kilowatt electric drivetrain performance, and we have the electric motor and the power electronic and the full control, even everything. And this is all the inside. Yeah. So this is this, but this is relatively new that you can put like an electric motor in such a compact way and and, and put it in a car because that saves a lot of space also. Yes. But, but the, the real innovation is not that we have the electric motor uh, as a hat of the transmission system because we have the combustion engine, yeah. we have the electric motor, we have the clutches and everything, yeah. and then we have the transmission. Yeah. But the real new innovation is that we opened up the transmission body and we fully integrated the electric control, the power electronics, and yeah. it's, it's an extreme condition where we are. And because the transmission system, as you may know, is flooded with hot oil. Yeah, so yeah. the electronics are always in, in contact with hot oil, yeah. which is an extreme tough condition for the electronic. And that's a real innovation we managed. I think that, that, that's, I mean, electrics and fluids doesn't go well together <laughs> right, normally. Right. So there's, yeah. there's a kind of yeah. problem. So that's a kind of, of ingenious work of, of getting these things together. Exactly. We have high voltage in the car yeah. and we have high performance power electronics offering a very, very high current. And of course, everybody 
who has ever been in a kitchen knows what happens if you fill a glass of water in yeah. your toaster. Yeah, of don't, do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that at all. <laughs> yeah. 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 So in, in general, uh, plug-in hybrids are very much like in vogue at the moment. Yeah. So a lot of I I, I spoke to to BMW and they were like, yeah, we are planning to roll out more and more plug-in hybrids yeah. because they think. It's the best way to convince people to full electric mobility. Right. Do you see it? Do you see it the same? I'm, I'm absolutely convinced. I'm a, a private a PHEV driver as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because as long as we have um, the infrastructure issue, yeah. especially in Germany and in yeah. Europe, yeah, you always have the range anxiety in your in your brain when you start your yeah. journey. Yeah. You never know. Do I have a charging spot? And when you have a charging spot. We don't have the right IT infrastructure to make it available when you are right there. So you don't know, is it busy? How long do I have to wait in the queue exactly, until yeah. it's, it's, it's my turn? Yeah. So a lot of uncertainty. That's why people are at the moment a little bit reluctant towards battery electric vehicles. Yeah. It's better if you have a recharging system at home, of course. So when you know you can go sure. on a tour yeah. and maybe you have a chance to recharge the battery but you have, don't have to rely on it. If I go on a long distance ride and I have to rely on a free charging spot, yeah. then it becomes an issue, yeah? But if you see, at least in, in, in Germany, more than 90% of the daily trips are below and underneath 100 kilometers. Yes, exactly. So a yeah. plug-in system with 100 kilometers is, fulfills nearly all daily requirements in Europe and in Germany. Yeah. And that's why I'm convinced the balance in between right size of a battery managing that cost versus combustion engine yeah you still can have a very very good compromise yeah. in using a plug-in hybrid system and so do you think to the second part do you think that could also like convince more people to 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 use uh, full electric cars in the future i'm absolutely sure i'm absolutely why yeah. because when we have more and more plug-in hybrids on the road everybody will enjoy the silence in the traffic oh, yeah? yeah pollution free if you have really areas where you, where you live with families or you have very crowded areas, imagine there would be no traffic noise in the in, oh, the, yeah. in the cities, yeah? And e-mobility is fun, yeah? You have the talk right from the right away, yeah? And, and you can enjoy it, yeah? And in case you recharge it with renewable energy, it's absolute CO2 neutral, yeah? So you can enjoy it, you can have fun, and you don't harm anything and anybody. And I think, when you really have the first vehicles on the market and people will experience what it is about. Yeah. And then we have the growth in charging, it will make its way almost by itself. Do you, do you have a number in years? What do you, what, when do you expect that, that electromobility will like? It will come more, I'm convinced 2022, yeah. because in the oh, first okay. year, 2021, yeah. we have in, in Europe the uh, emission legislation yeah. and in CO2, um, OEMs have to make it underneath 95 yeah. grams per kilometer. Yeah. yeah, so that's a challenge. And and um, as vehicles don't become smaller and smaller, no. Uh, yeah. At the moment, we even have a trend towards more SUVs. It's know, physically yeah. necessary that you have yeah. a strong electrification on board. Mm. So with this, people will experience it more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And and as OEMs have to bring those uh, such kinds of solutions onto the market, people will more and more experience electric drivings and it's a use case same as with mobile phone that time yeah, oh, yeah when people first they were very reluctant it was a very expensive system but then people more and more enjoyed it and now we have smartphones meaning intelligent devices with more and more functions in and this i'm absolutely convinced this story will repeat once again with electrification and uh, autonomous driving in the vehicle you as head of e-mobility for ZF, ZF is a global company. Yeah. Uh, it, it operates around the globe and in many different countries. So you see also um, that that developments are different in different countries in terms of e-mobility. Yes. You have China, where it's like a big trend. US, maybe not so much. Yes, absolutely right. We have to watch out for the regions. Yeah. yeah? Let's say Europe, Central Europe, Asia, and the US, yeah? yeah. And in China, of course, with a lot of mega cities which we have, we have local emission issues, really, I have to yeah. say. And I think here the, the government is doing a good job in, in, uh, in terms of electrification because they have very strong regulations to install charging spots and to have a dedicated fleet of uh, uh, emission free vehicles on the road, yeah? Mm. Um, for, for 
especially short trips, downtown areas, I think better electric vehicles are a perfect solution. Yeah? Yeah. In, in Europe, we have more the compromise. We have uh, downtown traffic and we have long distance ride. So range anxiety becomes more and more a topic. Mm -hmm. That's why I think plug-in hybrids are a very good solution. And in the US, of course, we have long, by far more long, long distance rides. Okay. So I think here we'll have a separation maybe on the coast areas or whatever we see best. But then for the long distance ride, it will take a while until we'll have full penetration of better electric vehicles. This is, I think, one, we talk about range anxiety and a yeah. lot of people have that. I yeah. mean, we talked about also like 90% of the daily commute is like under 100 kilometers. So it's a bit like a schizophrenic thing saying, I want to have a car that has 700 kilometers in battery reach and are going to be recharged in five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise, on the other hand, I'm not like driving, I'm driving maybe 20 kilometers a day. This kind of, do you think that, or how will this range anxiety vanish? Is it also a kind of battery technology that will change? Or is it more like we charge the batteries quicker in the future? Yeah, or is it a combination of both? It's, I think it will be a combination. First, of course, charging speed will raise. I'm absolutely convinced we are now already talking about 10C. Yeah, yeah. Um, that means? That means that 1C means you can fully reload your battery in one hour. Okay. 10C means in a tenth of an hour, okay. you can fully recharge the battery. So like Recharging 10 minutes for like Six a, minutes would be. Oh, uh, six 10, minutes for 10, a 60 kilowatt. Uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And uh, nowadays we are already talking about targets of, of 10C. So that means in, in six minutes, you would be capable to fully recharge the battery. Whoa. But once again, the infrastructure is a topic because when people from nowadays driving behavior yeah. think about battery electric vehicles, there's a mind change that is necessary. What do you do today when you drive a conventional vehicle? You yeah. drive it until the tank is empty and then you drive to the filling station yeah. and then you expect the battery to be recharged or the tank to be filled in a couple of minutes mm -hmm. before you continue your journey. Mm -hmm. Think about what happened to you, to me, and especially to the young people with a mobile phone. Nobody yeah. uses his mobile phone until it says battery warning, battery warning, recharge yeah. it right now. Now, if you walk around here on the Frankfurt Auto Show, yeah. you have a lot of service points where you can, you recharge, can recharge your mobile, yeah. Yeah. and everybody does. Yeah. And that's something we have to learn for better electric vehicle as well. We need an infrastructure, and then yeah. we even would not need so many fast charging spots, mm -hmm. because if you have the capability, to plug on your vehicle wherever you are and make sure whenever you yeah. start your or restart your journey the battery is full you only have a very very small percentage where you really would need fast charging and a second topic is when you go to a filling station with your conventional car you go for a journey you start your journey and when the tank is empty you refill it yeah. but you fill it completely right sure you don't fill it for 50 percent yeah sure if you change the behavior of a battery electric vehicle, and let's just create a case, you yeah. want to go for a journey of 550 kilometers. Your vehicle has a capacity of 400 kilometers on board. Yeah. It would be enough after 400 kilometers to have even a shorter stop and only recharge sure. the 150 because yeah. at the end, you're at your destination. Yeah, and then you can you're charge You're in the hotel, yeah. you have the whole night maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has to do with thinking of a different use case yeah. and that's why I'm saying maybe we need next driver's generation who are better to adapt because the elder the people you are the less they can imagine what it really means because yeah, right. they think in the same use case as using a petrol car. Yeah. What can that have to to convince those people? Well I'm talking to I'm me. I'm using yeah. the media yeah. right now. I'm talking to yeah, you talking, and talking hopefully to the media, you, have, yeah. you have a yeah. large auditorium. Yeah, I think sure. we have to train people. Yeah. yeah? And, and uh, as said, it's, it's a lot of theory we are talking right now, yeah. but same as with the mobile phone. Once you have enough users and use cases, then it will increase automatically because shops, um, inner cities, they yeah. will offer it as a service to be more attractive yeah. as they offer charging spots, for example. Same as you have here with suppliers or any kind of, of representatives on the show, they offer you a recharging spot for free for your mobile phone. One other thing or one other point that we have at the moment is the prices of batteries. There yeah. are still 
higher than we expected two years ago. Is, uh, and is it a trend that will be, or is it, let me rephrase it, or is that something, you see battery prices going down over the time, so that we have like cheaper cars or cheaper batteries for the cars, or is it not going down? Well, I see them going down, maybe okay. not as fast as we have seen, but on the yeah. other side, VW announced they have very attractive battery costs right now. Yeah. And if we compare it to the beginning of 2008 yeah. or 10, yep, the prices have come down oh, yeah, yeah, as yeah, we yeah, predicted so. at yeah. that time. Yeah. So I think we are on our path. We will not see miracles, but maybe with new technology and, and uh, yeah. a, a recharging capability, we will see more benefit. Yeah? Maybe batteries the same price, but higher recharging capabilities, mm. so that at the end, the use case will become cheaper, yeah. One argument also from people who are not so much into uh, electromobility is like recycling. What are you yeah. going to do, or is there a second life for the, for the batteries? And I think uh, this is something you think also at ZF about. Yes, yes, we think about that, but we are not again engaged about that. But if you watch out what is inside of a battery, yeah. we already have a, a very good recycling system for copper, for aluminium, for metals in Maybe. private households yeah. as well. And this, of course, has to be installed for batteries yeah. and lithium uh, ion technology as well, for nickel, for cobalt, for, for lithium. And it's possible. Yeah? We have already first companies uh, in Europe um, mm -hmm. who are engaged in that business. And it's possible. Yeah? At least it's, it's a challenge, of course, as long as the battery is charged yeah. Yeah, to disassemble it. But from physical perspective, you just have to cool it down. If you cool it down to absolute minimum, you can just crash it yeah. Yeah, and separate the materials. Separate yeah. the materials and yeah. then do the whole yeah. recycling process. And I'm and convinced that. once we have yeah. a dedicated volume of batteries in the market, the recycling system will be established and, and we don't need any further more uh, raw materials out of the earth. So, and what's the next step for ZF in terms of development uh, for, for e-mobility? Well, what we see right now, we have our, our first system on the market right now. Mm -hmm. We are quite happy to have Mercedes-Benz one as, as our premium customer right now. First sec technology is on the market. Second step right now will follow. I, I said uh, that, that we are integrating now the electronics yeah. into a more um, um, stressful and painful environment and out of the volume and the experience for the volume for transmission. Yeah. yeah? And that technology will integrate that. We will bring this back into full electric drivetrains. Okay. Yeah? And we will increase the performance of, of our electric drivetrain. Sure. We have announced that we have a two, two gear approach already oh, for wow. an electric drivetrain, yeah? where we can talk about optimizing it for the last points yeah. of percentage. We have a disconnect system. We will come up maybe with higher voltages, with new silicon technology. Whoa, whoa, so whoa, that's the a pipeline lot. is still full. Yeah? <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. That sounds very promising. Thank you very much. Well, my pleasure to talk to you. For this insight in what ZF is doing in, in electromobility, that was really helpful and learnful. So I hope you had a lot of fun uh, with uh, hearing what's going on at ZF and what's going on with electromobility. I think we learned a lot today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing. Leave your comments and see you next time. Bye.